Ladies and gentlemen, type in New York Times absentee fraud. This is why nobody trusts, or 60% of Americans do not trust media. And this is why nobody trusts Democrats, in addition to the fact that they cheated Bernie Sanders and Debbie Wasserman Schultz was forced to resign in disgrace. And, of course, they cheated Bernie Sanders in 2020 as well in Iowa. But here... New York Times, as more vote by mail, as more vote by mail, faulty ballots could impact elections. October 7, 2012. This is, of course, when President Obama was running for re-election. Fast forward to 2020, Trump is pushing a false argument on vote, vote by mail fraud. Here are the facts. August 31st, 2020. Now, nothing, things have gotten worse in terms of uh, mail-in and absentee ballot rules and regulations and laws. Like, they're more, they're more difficult to understand, they're more complicated, and you have seen, uh, just in the midterms alone, you saw a whole lot of problems in Florida, but you can look, and if you just click in, click on error and fraud at issue as absentee voting rises, this is by Adam Liptock, October 6, 2012, so... Before we get into recent revelations of ballot harvesting, which is not legal, uh, which is going to happen a lot, and which is one of the reasons William Barr is going to conduct numerous, endless investigations, and good for him, you have a wonderful quote here. Efforts to prevent fraud at polling places have an ironic consequence. consequence. Justin Levitt, a professor at Loyola Law School, told the Senate Judiciary Committee September last year. They will, he said, quote, drive more voters into the absentee system where fraud and coercion have been documented documented to be real and legitimate concerns. That is, he said, a law ostensibly designed to reduce the incidence of fraud is likely to increase the rate at which voters utilize a system known to succumb to fraud more frequently. Then there's a really interesting quote. Now, these are all the experts. See, what, what happens is they find experts to agree with whatever narrative they want to convey, which is always a narrative and a storyline and a theme that suits them politically at that point. See, Democrats have media. They have the New York Times. The New York Times is an extension of the Democratic Party. This is 2012. Quote, you, Okay, there are much simpler and more effective alternatives to commit fraud on, a, on such a scale, said Heather Gherkin, a law professor at Yale. I believe Professor Gherkin is now a strong proponent, I believe, I could be wrong, of mail-in voting. In 2012, she stated, quote, you could steal some absentee ballots or stuff a ballot box or bribe an election administrator or fiddle with an electri- electronic voting machine, she said. That explains, she said, quote, why all the evidence of stole- stolen elections involves absentee ballots and the like. You could steal some absentee ballots or stuff a ballot box. Okay. Also... Election, election law experts say that pulling off in-person voter fraud on a large scale enough to swing an election with scores, if not hundreds of people committing a felony in public by pretending to be someone else, is hard to imagine. Then they, they talk about why it's easier with absentee ballots. This is the New York Times. Now, be here, by the way, 9 p.m. Pacific tonight. We have the best late evening live stream in all of YouTube. That is an article... That is an article in the New York Times in 2012. Look it up. Error and fraud at issue as absentee uh, voting rises. You can look it up by Adam Liptock, October uh, October 6, 2012. October 6, 2012. In the New York Times, errors and fraud at issue as absentee voting rises. Why did I spend uh, four minutes on this? Because there are endless examples before we get to Veritas and James O'Keefe. And before we get to William Barr uh, rightfully calling out ballot harvesting, you can't, the whole point of absentee ballots is that you are going to mail them, mail in ballots, absentee, you're mailing them yourself. 
You are not giving them to a Democrat in Minnesota or anywhere else to collect for you. Gosh, they're so helpful. Democrats are so helpful. They're so nice. They just want to collect all the ballots to help you out. They cheat all the time. Nobody trusts them. Nobody, they even, Democrats don't even trust Democrats. <laughs> the Democrats, progressives, the left-leaning, the far left, that they don't trust Democrats because Democrats cheat. You could, you, would, you could ask Bernie Sanders, but he wouldn't tell you the truth. Or he wouldn't even acknowledge the fact that he was cheated. He, 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 his campaign accepted $200 million from people in 2016. And the left, aside from Jared Beck, Elizabeth Beck, and Nico House, three very courageous people with a DNC fraud lawsuit, the left just said, well, you know, that's, them's the breaks. That's just, that's what happens. They, the left likes or enjoys getting stomped on and bullied and cheated. They don't care. For some reason, they don't care. But here's Slate. Voter fraud exists. Republican restrictions won't stop it. By Mark Joseph Stern, September 1st, 2016. Instead, as election law expert and occasional Slate contributor Rick Hasen has explained, voter fraud occurs through absentee ballots. I believe Mr. Hasen now is just a proponent of absentee ballots now. But here, I could be wrong about that. But the vast majority of voter fraud... Okay, da, 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 da. So voter fraud does happen, but it almost never occurs at the polls. Instead, as election law expert and occasional slate contributor Rick Hayson has explained, voter fraud occurs through absentee ballots. This makes sense. It's much easier to forge a signature, impersonate a voter, or buy a vote in the privacy of one's home than it is in a voting booth at the polls. When they try to fact check William Barr or President Trump, they say, well, there's no evidence that this could happen. Yes, there's evidence. They're wrong. They bring up um, perhaps certain safeguards that are conveniently and easily circumvented. So what they, what they focus on is, is the current safeguards that in a completely um, sterile lab environment should protect absentee and mail-in ballots. Then they ignore the fact that people are harvesting these ballots. Okay, so now we get to seven minutes in. Subscribe to H.A. Goodman's other channel. Um, if you want to support my voice long term, ladies and gentlemen, your support is greatly appreciated. My Patreon is below in the pinned comment and description. I don't have $20 million in venture capital funding like some people, so your support in Patreon allows me to do what I do. Um, be here also um, tonight at 9 p.m. Pacific. Um, we have the best late, e late evening live stream in all of YouTube for politics, so it gets to like a thousand people. It's awesome. Be here, 9 p.m. Pacific. AG Barr's election deceptions go from bad to worse. Uh, MSNBC. So here we have, I just read to you a New York Times article, a Slate article from 2016, talking about, you know, forged signatures, uh, election, it could swing these absentee ballots, uh, and mail-in ballots can swing elections if um, a political party... And by the way, it was Republicans who were engaging in a lot of fraud through absentee and mail-in ballots in 2012 and 2016, or no, actually 2008, 2012, and in, in some cases in 2016, um, or at least they were afraid in 2016 that it could have happened. But here, you have... Between this unfortunate display and, uh, uh, and the Attorney General's penchant for meddling demonstrable falsehoods. Demonstrable falsehoods. Um, the Republicans struggled with the question about whether North Carolina, North Carolinians can vote twice. He used deceptive rhetoric. See, this is the thing. When they, about Russian election interference, there's no deceptive rhetoric. Nobody can name a Facebook ad. They don't have any, okay, this is what they do. When they offer a rebuttal, or they try to refute an argument, they call it a fact check. This is not a fact check. A fact check is, some, is something that is, if somebody says something that is categorically false, like, um, you know, uh, the Earth is the 10th planet from the sun. This is, this is not true. You can, fa you can fact check that statement. What you cannot fact check 
is a statement like uh, an overwhelming number of mail-in ballots can cause tremendous fraud and confusion on election day. That is a sentiment rooted in fact. You cannot fact check a sentiment linked to suspicion. You cannot fact check a person being suspicious based on how Democrats have cheated their, even their own candidates and how the New York Times and Slate have reported on mail-in ballots and absentee ballots being uh, linked to fraud. You can, you can actually make a, a, a statement and a claim rooted in suspicion because of what we just see now with, with Veritas and James O'Keefe. We'll get to that in a second, but here, I have to build up to this because this is MSNBC. So they're, they're like, and yet Barr spoke to the Chicago Tribune and he just kept going. There's no, and he wrote, he, he stated, there's no more secret vote with mail-in vote. A secret vote prevents selling and buying votes. So now we're back to the business of selling and buying votes. This is exactly what James O'Keefe uh, documented on video. Capricious, capricious uh, distribution of ballots means ballot harvesting, undue influence, outright coercion, paying off a postman. Here are a few hundred dollars. Give me some of your ballots. Okay, this isn't just wrong. It's bizarre. The idea that postal balloting is an invasion of one's privacy has been fact-checked and discredited. Um, they, they're, they're, they're pushing for ballot harvesting because they think it helps them. So this is an MSNBC article. Indeed, let's not forget that many members of Trump's team have voted by mail. That's completely irrelevant. This is another problem they make. This is another lack of logic. They say, oh, Trump himself has voted option D. Yeah, Trump is not the country. Trump himself asked and and um, applied for the absentee ballot and mailed it himself. He didn't give it to uh, a Debbie Wasserman Schultz's um, uh, cousin or, you know, person that she hired or Eric Tom Perez uh, or, or Hillary Clinton who will replace Biden. You watch. That prediction remains strong as ever. Okay, the whatever that debate is going to be, or whatever happens in that debate, you can rest assured that Trump is going to absolutely obliterate Biden. But here, um, but it was especially bizarre to see that Attorney General uh, describe a made-up scenario in which nefarious forces pay bribes to U.S. Postal Service. Well, it's not... See, this is the thing, nefarious forces. They they can't imagine wild, fanciful, and completely false lies. These are... And then the election law expert uh, lies and barkins uh, someone... Okay, so... And yet Barr couldn't seem to help himself. Someone will say to the, uh, the president just won Nevada and, oh, wait, we just discovered 100,000 ballots. That's the truth. That's what's that's that's what that's what ballot harvesting is. So, um, Project Veritas, who by the way, James O'Keefe is the man, sued the FBI because he was wrongfully listed as a felon on on the background check system, so he couldn't get a firearm. So, and then they removed him from that because he was erroneously erroneously placed here. This is more than this is WT, WPTV backing up what. Uh, William Barr saying more than 100 th oh, sorry more than 1000 Florida voters registered to vote in two different states Re more than 1000 Florida voters registered to vote in two different states requested absentee ballots so <laughs> that's just one example but here you have Palm Beach Post uh, absentee ballot fraud candidates could be breaking the law this is August 18th 2017 and it is a crime for non-official election personnel to be in possession of any absentee ballots, which is what um, William Barr was talking about. That happened a lot, and that happened in the O'Keefe video. Uh, they're actually called... Uh, there's a name for the people who collect ballots, political operatives, balloteros, in Florida. They collect ballots for either the Democrat or Republican parties. Um, for years, local campaigns and organizations have gone door-to-door -door collecting people's vote-by-mail ballots to deliver to election headquarters with the assumption that as long as they weren't being paid to do it, it was legal. That apparently is no longer the case, adding confusion to one of the most, more bizarre elements of Florida's already vague absentee ballot laws and potentially exposing well-meaning volunteers to first-degree misdemeanor charges. 
Okay, that's the Palm Beach Post. Now, here we have um, the issue of Project Veritas uncovers ballot harvesting fraud in Minnesota. This is New York Post. Veritas is claiming, okay, illegal ballot harvesting New- Newsweek. N- Yahoo News, a new Project Veritas video of voter fraud in Minnesota District. Okay, then there's voter fraud in New Hampshire that he's come up with uh, videos of proof. The scenarios that William Barr talked about, and then you have, um, let's just see if I can get the, um, there's a great, great description of the Balateros in Florida. So, so you have the scenarios that William Barr was talking about already playing out. You have them already playing out, okay? And um, the interesting thing is, the interesting thing is, Democrats don't want to believe they don't want to believe that this is even possible. They just want to stick their head in the sand and say, oh, my God, um, this is just, uh, I mean, who would believe this? Who would believe this? Um, it's happening, ladies and gentlemen. It's happening, and they are going to, um, William Barr is going to conduct numerous investigations. Why? Because you're going to have election fraud almost certainly at a massive scale, and it's only going to hurt um, Democrats. Because what Democrats think is they can get away with it. Democrats think they can get away with this. I'm trying to find that article, and I have it, but it's like, of course, I can't find it right now. Democrats think they're going to get away with this, and you're going to have Project Veritas, who's, who will have a tremendous impact on the election. And there's nothing they can... Like, he will be um, this election's... O'Keefe will be this election's um, Assange, but... And, and, and to Democrats, that's like, oh my God, Russia, Russia. No, no, no. Uh, Assange should be free. He simply just published what the Democrats wrote. See, the Democrats actually just wrote things like we need to elevate President Trump or we need to find, paint Bernie as an atheist. So their uh, machinations were actually published. The internal dialogue of Democrats, you got, to, you got a chance to actually see what Democrats were all about. And obviously people were found it repulsive. Um, then they turned that into a Russian plot and they claimed without evidence that it was a Russian plot. There was zero evidence. Simply saying, well, you know, um, uh, a lot of intelligence operatives believe this is not evidence. That is the actually the opposite of evidence. But here, um, here you have examples of tremendous, tremendous uh, fraud. So... Here, Miami Herald, with with half a, with half million absentee ballots turned in f- for Florida's primary, Miami data focal point for problems, <clears throat> and so that's just that that's just that's that was in February of 2016. Um, they all recognize they all recognize the potential for massive, massive fraud. And there, are, there are endless articles. And getting back to the, the correlation between O'Keefe and Assange, both are, both are exposing the truth. Now, this isn't someone's opinion. This is, they're caught in the act. The DNC emails were pristine. They weren't uh, James Clapper's opinion. They weren't the opinion of experts. They were the words of the DNC. O'Keefe videos Democrats in the act of cheating. Okay, so the truth to Democrats is like kryptonite. If you, if you, if you give them a mirror 
to themselves that like Medusa and they turn into like stone. Um, here, according to, to Smith's data, Miami Dade reported 1,870 problems, problem ballots out of 32, 000, uh, 37,213, an, astonish, an astonishing rate of 5% of mail ballots cast at the time. Of the 1,870 mail ballots with issues, 501 of them lacked a signature. And the remaining 1,369 involved another form of voter error. There are so many examples of... There are so many examples of voter fraud. It's unbelievable. Give me your thoughts below. O'Keefe is... William Barr is definitely going to use Project Veritas's videos for criminal uh, indictments and prosecutions. Give me your thoughts. Be here at 9 p.m. Pacific tonight. Um, best late evening live stream in all of you, too, for politics. Thank you so much. And subscribe to H.A. Goodman's other channel if you want to support my voice long term. My Patreon is below. Thank